It's time to set up the August bullet journal spreads and we're using watercolour again. This is actually the last bullet journal set I made in this flat before moving into my very first home. The moving series is up on my channel and it's been a big thing. I've never had an art studio before so I'm really starting everything from scratch. I didn't have a desk or a chair. Here I'm sat on a cushion on the floor by the windowsill. I had no house supplies, drills, screws, hammers, nothing like that. And then obviously when it comes to cute studio things I would like, like a nice pegboard which every artist seems to have, I'd like some shelves too. After renting for almost 10 years I'm finally able to put up a shelf and it's very exciting. That's why it's taken me a while because there are so many little things that you probably wouldn't even think of. The most fun part is finally making an art wall. I've known who my favourite artists and YouTubers are for quite some time and I haven't been able to purchase any prints from them because I haven't been able to stick anything on the walls. Like I hate to say it but I've only bought from like two small businesses in the last three years just because I wanted so badly to have a cute art wall and couldn't. Now I can finally buy from artists I like and actually decorate a room. I can paint the walls, put furniture in, put things on the walls, it's it's really cool. So it's very big and exciting and that's how it's going. We've got the second half of the renovation vlog coming up soon and a huge small business haul where we unbox a ton of prints and then we should be wrapping up the art studio and I can finally show you this whole process that's taken like three or four months because I mean it starts from moving day where the studio literally has a bed in, we were sleeping downstairs and storing everything in there really so it's a long journey and I think it's going to be really cool filming the September bullet journal setup in the new studio. It's going to look different, there'll be a proper overhead camera, the style of video is going to be slightly different too. I want to make my videos a little bit more fun and exciting, a little bit more personal so hopefully that's something we can implement in the next setup. If you've watched a lot of my videos this might be something that you have actually noticed in that the videos I filmed recently are different to the older ones. I didn't realise quite how different the setup would be in a new house and an actual studio. The videos look very different and I am going to be uploading all the ones from the flat very soon so that we can start afresh with this new different style going forward. Okay that's enough ramble, moving on to this setup. Up. The watercolour didn't go as well this time. I hoped it would, but it didn't. I think it's to do with the ratio of water to paint. So last month we painted galaxies. They were dark. They were probably about 80% paint with just a little bit of water. The pages did warp, but I mean it wasn't unbearable. It's still not nice having warped pages, it can be hard to work with, but it was pretty okay. This time around the theme is deep sea, we're using lighter shades and more water, so it gets a little bit bumpy. I tried to make different patterns, different effects and techniques on each page, but there's only so much you can really do if you still want it to look like water. One technique that worked really well was dropping water on this wet paint. Now I personally love water blooms, I think they're really pretty, but they are controversial. A lot of people don't like water blooms, they find them messy, and they were definitely easy to create in this journal, which was good for me, but if you don't like blooms then it probably wouldn't work for you. My process for using watercolour in this journal has been to paint paint all of the pages first because then it makes the rest of the process really simple. I don't have to worry about waiting for the paint to dry and then using pen and what if the pen bleeds and it's not fully dry and what if I spill some paint over all my journaling supplies, all of the cute papers. The process is more enjoyable splitting it over two days. It makes the second day a lot faster and I think it makes sense to keep the wet and the dry supplies separate from each other. For this setup we are trying out some new supplies. Well, new for the bullet journal. Tissue paper and metallic pencils. I've not really used tissue paper since I was a child. I've used it a little bit for the June spreads and it was difficult to control, but we're giving it another try. I want this setup to be fun and blue. We're grabbing anything blue. Since the tissue paper didn't really work last time when I added it 
flat. This time we're scrunching it up. It's probably how you're supposed to use it. Also using all sorts of crazy washi tape, like literally metallic washi tape that I've never even used before. Some stickers on top and loose drawings of fish. Well, kind of silhouettes of sea creatures. If I was going to draw them well on every single page, I'd still be drawing now. So they are silhouettes. And I suppose the theme is deep sea, so if you were really that deep in the sea, you wouldn't be able to see the fish well anyway. It was about this point that I realised the tissue paper looks like litter. It looks like I've made a page about the environment and all of the rubbish that's in the bottom of the sea. It looks like a statement piece. Like, do you see it? But honestly, the tissue paper was supposed to just be sea texture. It's very odd. It does look odd. What do you think? Does it look like rubbish at the bottom of the ocean? These stickers are really cute though. I got these stickers in my first Timu haul back in like November time. I planned a few different themes based on what I could purchase from Timu and this sea theme popped up a while ago. They have a lot of very small sticker sets. So I got the afternoon tea one, I got the sea. I got loads of different ones because they were only like £1.50 each or something. They might have even been less. It might have been like 80p. So I planned a lot of themes a long while ago. And and I got these stickers exactly for this theme. The blue checkered washi tape was really disappointing though. It's the perfect colour but it just kept ripping. I don't know if you have this but I have some washi tape that just rip constantly. I don't know if they're faulty like I got a bad batch or if it's the way that they're manufactured but some washi tapes are good and some are bad. Still, I grabbed as much blue as I possibly could for this theme. Bringing out the ink and stamps too for this setup, it's been a while. Since I have blue ink, I kind of thought why not? At this point, we're really just using everything blue. I like the little alphabet stamps, but they do take forever, especially if you've already made one or two words. That means some stamps are loose or on the floor and some are still in the case and it gets really difficult to find everything. But I will say the alphabet stamps do look really good. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, the habit tracker is a controversial subject because I moved house and then completely forgot it existed, completely. I did it with a few things. I also did it with my jelly gouache and it went a little bit moldy, but that's a topic for another day. I still use the weekly spreads, but absolutely forgot about the habits because I don't tend to use the monthlies very much. Like I don't have enough to write in them, so I never actually go back. I have like one or two things a month and I can generally remember that. I realized the other day that I'd missed two months of habits, so I need to get back into them. I thought at least adding the daily doodle diary to the tracker would encourage me to fill it out since that is every day and it's an achievement, but it turns out I haven't been doing the habits for so long that it goes back to before I added the diary to the tracker. Going into the second half of the year, I've said it before and I'm saying it again. I want to use the bullet journal more. I just need to make it a habit, which is easier said than done. It's actually really difficult to make something brand new a habit, something that you use every single day. Well, I guess I managed it with the daily doodle diary, so what's the excuse? Obviously moving house and moving everything around the new house and trying to set up a new studio hasn't helped. But half the problem is that a lot of the time I don't have very much to write about. My bullet journal is dedicated to art and content creation. My day-to-day -day tasks change a lot and some things are so small that I just do them rather than writing them down. I've noticed before in planner videos that some people write down tasks like emails for every day, but that's something I just wake up and do. It doesn't seem worthwhile to make a note of a task that literally needs to be done every day. I don't know, I feel like if I did that every single day of the year, it just eats into my own time. I know it needs to be done and I do it. I have been thinking a lot about the future. I would like to keep making these setups and keep using the bullet journal for the rest of the year. I don't have any set themes in mind, so if you've got any ideas, please drop them down below and I might pick yours. I feel like one should definitely be spooky. 
Okay, October. October should be spooky. Of course, it's Halloween. For the past seven months, I have actually been filming a separate side video about me using the bullet journal. I was planning for it to only be the first six months of the year, but there's so many other videos that I would like to get out this summer that it's gonna be an entire year long. The video is gonna be basically like, I attempted to bullet journal for one year. That's what the video is going to be. A little bit like the Daily Doodle Diary challenge where it covers quite a lot of time. I really enjoy filming videos that cover time. I really enjoy spontaneously grabbing the camera and filming a little bit of footage over the course of multiple months that I can then piece together into a video. I think it's a fun way to film and I quite like those types of videos that cover quite a bit of time because it's a bit hard for me to just bullet journal for a little while and say how it is. I like working on those longer videos, those longer projects. But when it comes to these journals, I bought two originally. It was a slight problem with one of them, which you might remember me talking about at the beginning of the year, but I do still have one to use. And I'm thinking next year will be more of a journal than a bullet journal. It won't be dated and it will be a lot more chilled. It will probably be something that I don't always film, a space for myself if I feel comfortable journaling, unless there's specific pages or events or themes that I might do. As part of the art wall, I have bought a calendar. I'm well aware that we're now in July, but it was a smart choice because I can use the first six months of art and put those prints on the wall. So it was a smart decision. I think I was missing a calendar. It's nice to see everything at a glance on the wall, but obviously that does also partly remove the need for a bullet journal. So really, these last few months of spreads are gonna be fun. Fun over practical, because why not? I don't know where next year is gonna lead us, but we should make some fun for the rest of this journal. I think this setup is pretty cute. It's different and the colour pencils were really fun to use so I might use these again. They're not super metallic, you can't really tell very well. That is the only thing. Thank you for joining me, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you on Thursday with a new video. Bye bye!